Hello everyone this is part 3 of what if Naruto was banished and goes back to Kanoa, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Ugh, who's there? Hey, so you feel it, do you? What are you talking about? Who are you? You don't know me. Hmm, well, I would expect that the person they left me with to be quite stupid. I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Well, that will change in due time. Oh yes, you and I will get to know each other very, very well. With every claw mark one make at you, I get that much closer to being free. Who? Dot are you? I am. Dot you? Or more specific, I'm the reason for you. I am the source of the malice, rage, and hatred that you felt every day for your childhood. Why you? Dot you are. A large maw of jaws wrapped around the figure, as the teeth dug into its flesh, the figure screamed in pure agony, until slowly the jaws ripped the figure asunder, a large toothy grin remaining, on a pair of blood-red eyes. Naruto shot out of his bed, his eyes bloodshot and so wide they would pop out if not for the proper sockets connecting them. He looked at his person, checking every finger, every toe, every inch of his back and stomach. He had to do it twice he was so scared. When he was satisfied that he was still alive, he exasperated a deep breath and let himself fall onto the bed again. He couldn't get to sleep. Not just because of the nightmare, but because of all the sweat, which he now noticed covered every inch of his new mattress, blanket, and himself for that matter. It would be too uncomfortable to try and get to sleep like this, and in the end he would probably drive himself crazy trying to do so. With nothing else too, Naruto found himself staring into the tile of the ceiling. That bastard, Dot can he really come back? Thought Naruto, I finally get a good life going for me, and now the biggest problem of my life has to come dicking around again. No, I can't think like that anymore. I'm more than enough to keep the Kyuubi in check. Luckily for Naruto, he was ripped from his sleep only two hours before dawn came over the village. He went to sleep early too, so he shouldn't have to worry about a lack of sleep today. Even more so, a mission that's a class caliber ought to let the shinobi involved at least have one day to prepare for what could most likely be a long drawn out task. He quickly got himself dressed and after a quick breakfast, skirted towards the hockage offices. When he got there, he was led to Sunid's personal chamber. He never knew the hockage had such a place to hold such meetings. To the effect, it was a plain and very simple room. The only real decor were the two couches, and the portraits of the last four hockage. It was probably kept simple for a good reason. After all, this was a place to discuss black ops, and the simplicity of the room would make it hard to slip in unnoticed. Naruto also felt a tense barrier of chakra surrounding the room, possibly to keep any scryers and spies out of the conversations. Sunad was sitting there, a cup of tea in her hand. Well Naruto-san, you're here rather unexpectedly first. The others might not arrive for another few minutes, she said. I learned quickly that when Futeki-san says to get up, he means get up, he smiled faintly. I see, said Sunad, well, make yourself comfortable, the others will be here when they can. It was a few minutes, but soon enough, Naruto and Sunad were with the other four shinobi picked for the mission, Sakura, Tenten, Ino, and Sasuke. The four made themselves comfortable, with Naruto scrunched up between Tenten and Sakura, much to Sakura's chagrin and Ino's amusement. Sasuke was too serious at the moment to neither notice nor care. Now that you're all here, I'll get to business. First off, as always, you have all been picked for your particular expertise in your respective fields. Tenten for her weapons mastery, Sakura for her medical training and knowledge, Sasuke for his all-around ability and adaptiveness, Ino for her family techniques and information gathering, Naruto for his unique set of techniques, and of course because of his status as John and elect, said Sunad, that last comment of hers getting a few noises from her intensely listening ninja. As you know, this is an A-rank mission. It was a couple of days ago that our offices received a letter containing this, said Sunad, as she pulled out a piece of paper, and handed it to Sasuke, who peered over it quickly. He looked at the hockage like she was mad. This is an encrypted message, still in its raw form, he informed her. I tried to give it the once over myself, but it's quite intricate. Someone with that kind of skill would have to at least be an elite John and themselves. 
However, it also came with this normal note, said Sunad, holding the said note in the air. As of two days ago, our allies at Sunakaga were the victims of a coup de tort, losing their current Kazekage in the process. This statement caused a still shock to come over the room. To take over a village was no easy task, and it certainly wasn't the case for a shinobi village. To take out the strongest shinobi of the village, and then assume power took considerable assets, power, and planning. Who sent the note? Asked Sakura, being brave enough to break the silence. It was signed, TGK, but as far as any other clues, we have no idea. They claim to be close to the Kazekage and that they request our help in this problem. Normally we would expect a hefty sum ahead of time before accepting this mission, but there are other factors to consider in this case. And what would those be? Said Eno. I know that Sunakaga are our allied village, but I thought it customary to stay out of the politics of the major villages. Given the current circumstances of the world and our relationships, Suna is our only trustworthy ally at the moment. Given the nature of someone to stage a coup de tort to gain control, it can be established that this particular someone is ruthless and motivated to say the least. If the other villages were to get wind of this, say for example Kumogakur, the situation could leave us isolated from the rest of the world. With tensions as they are, this would also be an opportunity they wouldn't pass by to try and wipe us out for good. So what do we do? Asked Naruto. The mission is as follows. Your first task is to infiltrate sooner and establish contact with this, TGK, and make a base of operations. We have no idea how difficult a task this will be, so it's best to be prepared for a long stay. Your second task is to rendezvous with our Suna diplomat and give him that encrypted message, so he can decode it. Your third task is to remove the leader of the coot, and all others who might hinder your progress. This a rank is to be considered a black operation, so you will need to be desperate about your identity, explained Sunad. The mission will commence at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Take this time to prepare and say your goodbyes, as you might not to see anyone for a while. That's all I needed to say, the rest is up to you and this informant. Good luck you five. With that Sunad let herself out of the room, and back to her office to work on her other duties. Sasuke stood up and stretched himself out, letting the blood rush to his limbs. Well, I think we can all pretty much take care of ourselves, so it's up to you guys if you want to meet up later today or not, he exclaimed to the others. Sasuke, walk with me, asked Naruto, to which Sasuke just quirked a brow. Um, sorry Naruto, I like you as a friend, he replied. After the shock of Sasuke cracking a joke, Naruto shook his head. Just come on jackass, I got a few things I wanna ask. The two boys let themselves out. I didn't get anything to eat this morning, tuned in Eno, anyone else up for some grub? Sounds good, said Sakura. Tenton nodded, and the girls left for their own destination. All right Naruto, spill, demanded Sasuke. He was a immensely patient sort, but for some reason the curiosity in him was eating at him. Naruto was a few paces ahead of the Jonin, looking at the sky, and occasionally behind him to see Sasuke still following him. From the offices of the Hokage, Naruto had led Sasuke to the park. Naruto walked himself in a stationary circle in a plot of grass, digging his feet into the softness of it. I remember what took place here like it was yesterday, spoke up Naruto. You mean that fight with Tatsujin? asked Sasuke. Yeah, it was quite a shock for us. Then again, you held your own well enough. What happened to that guy? When I was away, every now and then, those words of his would ring throughout my head. Well, he stayed for graduation, and after a year he received his promotion to Chunin. He did a rather decent job of it, but then he decided one day to up and leave. You can do that. Apparently, the Sandime reviewed and stamped the papers himself. Haven't seen hide nor hair of the guy since then. Naruto took a few breaths, and then sat himself down. Well, that's one less thing to worry about. Still, I wish he was still around, you know. Sasuke held a small grin. You just hate not knowing why someone hates you, don't ya? He said I was a traitor. I learned a bit about that at Futeki's, but he said that there was only one version of the story, told by the Tatsujins. That just bothers me. So, you're hoping to find a different version. How in the hell would you start to look for that? I'll worry about that later, but speaking of versions of history, said Naruto, as he got himself up, I'm assuming that not a lot of people know who I am right. Yeah. Dot and, is there any way you know to keep it that way? 
Sasuke looked at his friend like he was losing it. Why in the hell would he want to do that? Unless. Naruto, I don't think keeping you hidden is the best way to deal with this, advised Sasuke. Hey, look who thinks he knows everything now, scoffed Naruto. And what would be the better option Sasuke? Before I left I was the bane of Kanoa, and five years or not, I doubt that has changed. You're wrong, and yet right, said Sasuke. Naruto looked at his friend after such a hypocritical remark. What does that mean? Well, the Naruto of old was indeed the bane of Kanoa. But the way I see it, to deny that is to deny who you are now. If you want people to see you differently Naruto, quit focusing on your past and put everything into your present. I am focused on that Sasuke, replied Naruto, it's the rest of the village that worries me. If word gets out I'm back, I doubt it'll pass without a hassle. Your own words Naruto, I'll worry about that later. You can deal with that bullshit when it comes. Besides, they wouldn't want to mess with you anyway if they saw the way you turned out. Oh well, said Naruto, I should know better than to get into an argument with you. Anyways, thanks Sasuke, I feel better now. Sasuke just nodded, while Naruto wrapped his arm around his friend's shoulder and the two started walking from the park. So, as for a lighter topic of conversation, stated Naruto, I talked to Ino and how you two are an item. Sasuke leered at his friend, seeing the mischievous grin plastered all over his face. Your point, he asked. He had no desire to dodge the question, might as well just bite the bullet. So, dot how far has she let you go? Are you so starved for sex you'd listen to another guy's relationships? He asked his friend. Humor me Sasuke, just call it a conversation between men, said Naruto. Some man, muttered Sasuke. Still, it wouldn't hurt if he just threw a scrap his friend's way. I'd rather he hear it from me than going to ask Eno, thought Sasuke, inwardly shuddering at the consequences of that possible situation. We've had sex, if that's what you wanna hear, he said, clasping his mouth shut. Naruto laughed at Sasuke's reaction. You act as if you released the information of an Anbu member or something Sasuke, he said. It's not that horrible to speak about it. Somehow, that doesn't make me feel better, coming from you, sighed Sasuke. So how did it happen? Naruto, I swear to God if you push it. No, not that, I meant did you confess? Or did she? Oh, said a deflated Sasuke, surprised at the tact of his friend. He scratched his chin as he recalled the specific date. It was a bit after graduation. We had been getting along pretty well, and we managed to graduate in the same class. After you had left, I was alone pretty much most of the time, and Ino was the only one to try and talk to me. She told me about that part, but when did it happen? I was walking about my business one night, and bumped into her, and, accidentally kissed her. Accidentally. Asked a suspicious Naruto. I tripped okay. Anyways after I apologize about a thousand times, she asked me if it would be okay to do it again. So, I guess your answer would be we both did at the same time. Sasuke and Naruto would walk a bit before they were met with a fork in the road. I'm heading home, seeing as this might be our last restful day for a while. See you tomorrow Naruto, said Sasuke, and with that Naruto and Sasuke went their separate ways. Naruto, seeing Sasuke's point, decided it was in his best interest to take it easy as well. So, when was the last time we all gathered like this? Said Ino, as she put down her glass of tea, staring across the table booth to see Sakura and Tenten with their own respective drinks. Hmm, I think it had to be at least three years ago, said Tenten, a bewildered look on her face as she tried to recall. It was two years, and it was when we had that mission infiltrating that brothel we suspected laundering funds for Kumo and Otogako, clarified Sakura. They could only use Kunoiki for that one, and we were the three assigned for it. Yeah, that's right. Other than that time, we haven't spent a prolonged amount of time in each other's company, said Ino. She took a glance at Sakura, who was fiddling with her drink, something quite not in her character. Sakura, something up. She asked, gaining the pink-haired woman's attention. I was just reminded of that job of ours back then, she said, looking rather pained. Oh, said Eno, patting her fist on her palm, you mean the, servicing, and such. Yeah, I suppose that was our first time for all of us. But why think of that now after two years? Sakura looked at Eno, deciding if she should speak her reasons. Sure, she was her friend, and she trusted Eno completely. 
However, Eno did have a lack of control when it came to keeping or telling secrets. It was one of her hobbies since she was a child, and Eno never seemed to grow out of it. Still, Sakura could tell these two about it, they were her friends, and fellow females. It's just I'm a bit, disgusted with myself I guess. I mean yeah, I know damn well it was part of our mission to stay in cover and do jobs over there. But still, I feel dirty just giving myself like that to some strange old man. I was always told your first should be with someone you really care for. So it's about your, virgin status being revoked? Asked Tenton. Well, that shouldn't be the only factor for how you are judged Sakura. Yeah, I know. But I guess I'm nervous that from here on out, I'm just considered used goods. No one wants to feel like that, female or male. Sakura, for a kunoiki, you sure are bound by the rules normal people live by. Sakura looked at her friend quizzically. What do you mean by that Eno? We are people. Yes, but we are shinobi, and as such have responsibilities as well as advantages. Take me for example Sakura. I consider for myself that I had two types of virginity. Two types. There's the physical, hymen tearing to allow access to the uterus for reproductive purposes, simply biological type of virginity. The type many consider to be the only type around. Except for yourself, asked Tenton. We're shinobi, and even more importantly, kunoiki. It's in our job description to know, provide, and execute techniques that are sexual. Come on guys, we were in the same classes for God's sake, so I know you both know this. That by no means Sakura, should hold you back, for it's against everything you stand for when you wear the Kanoa hate eight. But then, if you lose your virginity, what other type is there? The way I see it, it's inevitable for Kunoiki to lose their virginity in the course of duty, so it shouldn't count against them. For me, I see there being a more important, pure, virginity. And what's that supposed to mean? The type you lose, and only lose, when you give it willingly. When you're with the one you love, and you wish to, that's virginity I'm referring to. So Sakura, as long as you still have that, why not think of yourself as something other than, used goods? Sakura looked at both her friends, who were sporting supportive smiles on their faces. At first, she wanted to just dismiss the thought completely, as to her medical training had left her seeing things as only black and white when it came to such bodily matters. She took a gulp of her tea, and set the glass down with a smile. You know Eno, that has got to be the dumbest thing you've ever said, she said with a smile. What? Said Eno, rightfully annoyed with her friend's reaction. Still, somehow what you said sounds, right, said Sakura, so, thanks Eno. Eno was dumbfounded, seeing as she was getting ready to smack Sakura silly. A smile came to her face, and Eno lifted her glass. How about a toast? To a successful mission, and that Sakura knows that she's still a woman in our eyes, said Eno, to which Tenten replied with a, here, here. Now I wonder why we don't do this more often, asked Sakura nonchalantly, as she offered her glass just before their food arrived. They ate in silence, content with the company of their best friends. It was mid-morning, and the five shinobi sent from Kanoa were busy making their way to Sunakaga. However, they were taking it rather slowly, at least to the descent of one of the group. Geez Sasuke, any slower and sooner will be destroyed by the time we get there. Why the heck are we hoofing it on the public roads? Gruffed a confused Naruto, Tezumateki on his back with a hand on the handle. This certainly wasn't the way he figured they would get to the village. While he and Sasuke were hoofing it on the dirt road, the three women were perched in a caravan being pulled beside them. It was a rather high quality for a normal caravan you might find for a merchant or a middle class family. It was wooden, though the wood was high quality. It was fashioned with a dome-style cover, made from dried leather and such to make it tough and water-tolerant. It was being pulled at a light pace by one horse provided for them by the Yondime. I told you this two times already Naruto, it's to get used to cover. Don't you remember soon it said this is a black operation. So, why aren't, we doing this when we actually get there? The more we practice, the better off we'll be when we do. And out of all of us Naruto, you need the most field experience. Naruto gruffed at his friend's comment again. He wasn't, mad, just frustrated. Sasuke did have a point, and he was the squad leader for the mission. Still, the wait was agonizing. The first mission he gets since coming home and he has to walk to a village still a nation's way away. Still, he had to pass the time somehow. 
he remembered how he did so when he went to Futeki's home. Then again, he was 12 years old then. All right then Sasuke, so what exactly are we five supposed to be? He asked. Sunad gave us some fake backgrounds and such, but perhaps talking about it would help you out. According to what she told me, you and I are bodyguards for the three girls, who happen to be daughters to a significant benefactor for Suna. Hence the reason they're in this caravan provided for us and we're escorting it. As the two males were up ahead talking about their mission, the three girls in question managed to overhear the conversation. Wait, we're sisters then, said Tenton. Suppose so, but we look nothing alike, said Sakura. Well you know what that means right, said Ino, to which the others looked to her with a shake of their heads. It means that one of us is this made-up guy's genuine daughter, and the others are his illegitimate children, said Ino, cracking a smirk. You are really in a world of your own there Ino-chan, said Tenton. So who is the genuine daughter? Of course it's me, said Ino lifting her face in mock pride. The only thing genuine about you is your ego, snapped Sakura. What did you say? That's funny coming from someone with the only pink haircut in the entire village. Sakura and Ino looked at each other in contention. You could almost see the bolts of lightning between their eyes as they fought for dominance. Tenten however, provided a useful distraction. She has a point though. If we are sisters, it might help to make it so that we look alike, said Tenten, to which the two other kunoiki looked to her. How do you propose we do that? Said Ino. Well Ino-chan, you're good with makeup and all that stuff, why don't you try it? That's a good idea, the less suspicion we let off, the better, said Sakura. There will be time for that later. No sense wasting supplies if they're not needed yet. Besides, as long as we're in here no one will see us. Let's just kill the time somehow, said Tenten, and pulled out of her sack a paperback book, to which Sakura twitched slightly at sight of it. Ten-chan, said Sakura, nervous of the answer she'd get, is that what I think that is? Tenten blinked at Sakura's reaction to what she thought was a trivial matter. It's just a book Sakura-chan, nothing dangerous about it. I know it's a book. It's what it's about that bugs me, said clarifying Sakura. What? You don't like the Ika series? At that comment Ino finally caught on to Sakura's reaction. She had heard plenty of things about the, for lack of a better word, crippling effect that perverted book series had on its readers. The first time she heard of it she was grateful her sensei Asuma didn't read such material, or else things might have been even more awkward than they were with her former team. Tenten, I didn't thank you for the kinky type. Now all your mastery of weapons seems to come to a new light, said Ino, fingering her chin in perspective. What? I think it's pretty funny. The author knows how to make things funny. Tenton, you think a book that's reminiscent of softcore porn to be funny. You guys are really uptight, if you don't want to read them, that's your choice, not mine, said Tenton, signaling her end of the discussion by lying down facing away from the other two girls and opening her book. Ino and Sakura let it be as well. After all, Tenton was a good person, so to think she was some kinky little deviant without an ounce of proof was a bit rude. Naruto and Sasuke had discussed the basics of the mission with each other, and were now just walking, vigilant of their surroundings. Naruto looked into the distance and saw a figure approaching them. As they got closer to the figure, it turned out to be a middle-aged man, walking down the path with a walking stick in his right hand. The old man looked at the five shinobi, particularly at the three women. Naruto unsheathed the tezumateki and pointed it at the old man. Hey, who are you to look at the Kotaro sisters like that? He said in an authoritative voice, using the family name Sunad gave Sakura, Ino, and Tenten. However, instead of shock, or surprise and cooperation from the old man, he received a quick jab in his left foot by his walking stick. Naruto yelped a bit and hopped a few seconds as the old man continued his walk. Kids these days, no respect, he murmured before he walked out of sight. Ugh, lucky for that old fart I'm on a mission, otherwise I'd teach him, said Naruto. Yes, how magnificent a display of your skills it would be if you, a 17-year-old ninja used his unrivaled skill on a 60-something old man walking down the path. You're mocking me, aren't you? Said Naruto grimly. Only because you made it so easy, now come on, we need to get some distance before night falls, said Sasuke, to which Naruto sighed and complied with. Aside from the humorous fiasco from Naruto earlier that day, the group found the road to be quite empty. 
There were others using it, but Naruto wanting to not make a fool out of himself again, just kept his mouth shut and his eyes forward. Sasuke was rather surprised with that, as he knew the boy as one who didn't know when to quit. Somebody taught him how not to make things go from bad to worse, that's for sure, thought Sasuke. Come to think of it, this was nothing like his old friend. Was it wrong of him to hold Naruto to the old image? He decided he would observe, and to just enjoy having a good friend of his back in action. The girls were just lying back, with not a care in the world. They knew that while they were on a mission, they don't usually get down time such as this while on one. It would be a while before they would have to get serious, and resting now would be useful to prepare and rest up for a dangerous mission. It was nightfall, and the group had managed to cover a good amount of traveling. It would be a few more days before they were at Suna, but they were definitely out of the fire country by now. If they could keep pace, they would be able to arrive by the end of the week. Suna may be in danger, but even a coup requires time to gain control of everything. With that in mind, Sasuke decided to set camp for the night. They kept going until they managed to find a place quiet and with a nearby water supply, such as a pond or stream. Sasuke and Naruto had no problem with sleeping outside in some sleeping bags. The girls, would shack up in the caravan. Since they were in a neutral territory, there wasn't a threat strong enough to consider a watchman. The five slowly let sleep overcome them. Boy, it's you. Naruto found himself to be bound, as he floated helplessly in a swirling vortex of blackness. Eyes, blood red with fury, slowly opened and surrounded him on all sides, like a kaleidoscope from the inside out, or a house of mirror images. Do you feel it, boy? Do you feel the retching of your guts and bone? It's a wonder you can withstand the pain with that grin of yours all the time. You think you can kill me? If you think I'm going to let you do what you want after the hell you put me through, you can just bite me. You can bitch and moan all you like, boy. I know as well as you do that you fear me. Oh, but you'll have a whole new appreciation for that fear when I am finally free of the seal. You'll have to kill me first, you nine-tailed piece of shit. Yes, that's good, boy. Keep that determination. It will be all the more satisfying when I crush your dreams as badly as I crush your life. Naruto awoke in a jump and a cold sweat. His breathing struggled to slow to a reasonable pace for fear of his heart exploding. He examined his surroundings, and saw Sasuke nearby asleep like a stone. He could the soft cooing of the girls inside the caravan, so he knew that they were asleep as well. Sure as hell ain't tired anymore, should try to get some air, and some distance from this makeshift bed, thought Naruto. He picked himself up and walked himself a ways from the campsite. He found himself at their water supply, a nearby stream, and proceeded to dip his feet in the water and lie back on the ground underneath him. He looked up at the stars, and just tried to stay awake. Despite having the cold water surrounding his feet, Naruto couldn't deny his body's need for sleep. He could feel his eyes drooping slowly. Would he just have to deal with that nine-tailed bastard again? Suddenly, his ears and eyes thankfully, perked up the a rustling sound coming from behind him. He slowly got up and turned to see the source, and exhaled a breath he didn't even know he was holding when he saw it was Tenten, rubbing her tired eyes a bit to see her way. Hmm. Oh Naru-kun, you couldn't sleep either. She asked him. Something like that, he said. Tenten leaned headfirst towards the water, and took some gulps to quench her throat. So, you always stay up at night. Bet you were a handful for your parents, said Tenten jokingly. Naruto, understanding Tenten had no idea, just smiled solemnly. Actually, I don't have parents Ten-chan, he said. Tenten wanted to hit herself with one of her nice, blunt weapons at that moment. Naruto held up his hand to her. It's okay, there's no way you'd have known, he said. My father died in battle, and my mother died after giving birth to me. It's rather sad, but I've grown to accept it with time. Tenten had her head kept down, staring at the reflection in the water, taking in a bit more she didn't know about Naruto. I was a breech baby, so I never knew my mother, said Tenten, to which Naruto looked over to her. That was a horrible thing to have to go through, he said with empathy. I still am in a way, added Tenten. My father runs the store with me, and we live together. Every now and then, I catch his eye, and there's this look. What look? asked Naruto. Being without real parents, he was without a clue as to what the young girl was talking about. It's like, disappointment, she said, a tear coming to her eye. 
He loved my mother deeply, and it's almost like he sees me as the reason she's not around anymore. I try to confront him about it, but he just says, your mother would have wanted it this way, but I know he means more than that. Tenton was shuddering a bit, as the demons of her life started to hover over her. She never let anyone know about this, as she wanted to be strong by taking care of it herself. And now, for one reason or another, just spilled the beans to someone she just barely knew. She then felt a finger on her cheek, and turned to see Naruto wipe the tear that was on her face. I don't think he means anything bad by that, he said to her. What? She asked him. Well, sure there are the obvious negative consequences to his words, but he could have meant something else. Like what? He said that your mother would want things this way right. Maybe he means that he regrets not you, but her. That she can't see you as an elite jonan. Any decent parent would never hate their kids, horrible circumstances or not. But, what if he doesn't, mean that? Asked Tenton. Did you ever ask him? Well no, I was never able to tell him something like that. It made me things would just get awkward between the two of us. Well, I guess you'll have to ask him when we've finished the mission, eh? You're a strong girl, Ten-chan, saying a few words to your father should be cake, said Naruto, a grin on his face. Tenten arose to her feet and started to walk back to the campground. Naruto, afraid he said something wrong, was about to say something until. Thanks Naru-kun, she said. I think I'll have to do that when we get home. Otherwise I'll still be carrying this weight on my shoulders until it crushes me. Well, good night. Good night Ten-chan, he said. And Tenten returned to camp. As Tenten walked her way back, a smile across her face, she came face to face with someone. Sakura-chan, said Tenten. Sakura was awake, and had a confused look on her face. I'm sorry Ten-chan, I overheard a bit of your talk with Naruto-kun, she confessed. Tenten quirked a brow. Well, that's all right I guess. Thanks for being honest about it. Well, I'm off to bed. Tenten started her way back. Ten-chan, said Sakura. Yes. Naruto-kun, what do you think about him? Tenten about faced to see Sakura had her back turned to the weapons master. Hmm, well, that's rather hard to figure right now, she said honestly. I think H is a great guy, but right now it's nothing more than comrades in arms. I could see myself with him though. I see, said Sakura. Well, I'm done with my business out here, good night Ten-chan. And with that Sakura passed by Tenten and made her way back to camp. Tenten wasn't stupid, but she wasn't going to force Sakura into an argument. The last thing they need on this mission is ally against ally, and Sakura was a loyal friend. Tenten finally made her way back to bed. The day after was a quick pack up and the five were on their way to Sunakaga again. It was tensely quiet that day. Naruto, still feeling the effects of his nightmare, just kept his eyes on the road and only spoke briefly when spoken to. Tenten and Sakura kept themselves busy, and Ino was stuck in the middle of the tension in the caravan. They managed to finish the day near a sizable village, so Sasuke decided they should find a hotel to spend the night in. It wasn't long before they found one at a reasonable price. Hello, how can I help you this evening? Asked the attendant running the front desk. We'll need two rooms for the night, five beds in all please, said Sasuke. After a few minutes, the attendant arranged for the group a dual room with a bathroom separating the two rooms. So you all right being with me? Are you sure you wouldn't want to sleep with Ino? Naruto asked, as he and Sasuke settled down into their two-bed room. I'm not so desperate for Ino's affection that I'll sleep with her during a mission. We both have an understanding that it's work before play. Well, you're a better man than me then, shrugged Naruto, and laid back the rather comfy bed. Something tells me I'd better keep a leash on you, said Sasuke, eyes narrowing toward his friend. Relax, I'm not that stupid, said Naruto. Sasuke being satisfied with that answer, started to settle himself down. That is, until a peculiar odor made his nostrils flare. Naruto, when's the last time you bathed? He asked. Um, said Naruto, thinking about the answer, must have been my first night back in Kanoa. Get up, said Sasuke sternly. What? Get up and take a bath Naruto. I'm not going to have you stink up this room so bad I can't sleep, said Sasuke. Naruto just shrugged and obliged his friend. He entered the side room next to the bathroom, where people were free to strip and get their supplies before diving in. Supplies? That was something Naruto didn't bring with him. 
In the mind of Naruto, emergency cups of ramen and some clothes took precedent. Not to mention that the biggest thing he carried was Tezumateki. He cracked open the door to peer out as Sasuke unpacking some things from his pack. Sasuke, you have some soap and such? He asked. Sasuke, annoyed in the impression that his friend was stalling, picked up his bottle of shampoo and bar of soap, and hurled them at Naruto, hitting him square on the head. Thank you, groaned Naruto. He opened the bath door to be awashed with a ton steam. Jeez, what a fog. Can barely see the floor in here, he thought. Naruto felt his way to the rim of the tub, and sat himself in. Much to his surprise, it was filled and was reasonably hot to boot. Well, that saves me a few minutes. Hate having to wait for the water in a tub much like the water to heat to cook ramen. Wait a minute, what's that on the bottom? A foot. Oh no. Who is that? Sakura, did you come in here with me? Naruto heard that voice like it was his death knell. And unfortunately for the poor bastard, the steam was finally condensing as well, clearing the room. He slowly made out the shape of Tenten, in all her glory, washing her hair while immersing her lower body in the water. He couldn't see a lot, the view of her size eyeball cleavage was plenty for his, healthy young man, imagination. Tenten scrubbed furiously, then moderately, then to a dead halt as she saw who decided to join her in the tub. There he was, Naruto, opening and closing his mouth like he was a fish using his gills for oxygen. But what really hit him over the head was what came out of her mouth next. Tenten could be too playful sometimes, really. Jinaru-kun, if you wanted to join me, all you had to do was ask, she said without a hint of irony. You are, T, Ten, T, Tenten. He would have been able to eventually explain himself, but unfortunately, he was to be silenced for the rest of the night within 10 seconds. Ten Chan. Overcame a voice to which Naruto quickly began to say his final prayers to. Sakura opened the bathroom door. I thought this shampoo would do good for your hair, seeing as it's got to get dyed soon anyways, said Sakura, as she saw Naruto and dropped that bottle in her hands. Oops. 10 seconds gone. Though Naruto wouldn't wake up in the morning to find out what happened, Tenten was witness enough, as Sakura in a flash landed a right fist straight on Naruto's jaw, sending him through the bathroom wall, the changing room wall, and finally to land on the other wall of his hotel room and slide down unconscious. Sasuke was in bed and turned his head at the source of the commotion. But then, seeing that it was Naruto, rolled over and tried to get to sleep. They somehow managed to convince the hotel owner to send the repair bill to Sunid back in Kanoa, and the five quickly left the village before they had to answer for anything else. Naruto surprising slept quite well last night, and all it took was a fist coming at him with the momentum of a large boulder. The five would reach the destination by tomorrow. The winds howled with a fierce pitch across the canyons, craters, and various geological structures that made the country of wind. The land was a very desolate subtropical plain, where many systems converged to dump their hot, dry air all across the area. As such, many of the citizens had adjusted to live in the desert, wearing light reflective cloth and digging irrigation wells at points known for lots of water. In one canyon, the country's village could be seen. Sunakaga was a jewel in the desert for the ruling class, as their environment made them experts in the fields of urban camouflage, endurance, and patience. Their numbers were not as plentiful as other villages, but soon as ability to quickly dispatch large groups of enemies made other villages and countries wary of trying an all-out assault. Two guards were watching over the main gate into the village. Dressed in Jonan equipment, the two had cowls and large capes for protecting them in the desert's winds and sand. They weren't particularly armed, but after one got close enough to the gate, they could see that was because of the two watchtowers on each side, with two shinobi equipped and ready to strike within a order's moment. Our five friends had made their way to the village, and were stopped routinely by the two guards. Naruto and Sasuke stood still, keeping a glare towards the two Jonan. They were now in full cover, and the part of, bodyguard, was to be played to a key if they were to go without much of a fight. Hell, they couldn't risk being figured out at all, or the mission would be an immediate failure. One guard came right up to Naruto. Papers, he said in a no-nonsense tone. Naruto glanced at Sasuke, who tossed a booklet of forms toward him. Naruto opened the booklet and showed them to the guard. We're here to escort the daughters of the Kotaro family. As of today, they are to live here in Sunakaga, said Naruto. The guard looked at the papers, leering one eye at Naruto. And you two are. I'm Junaki Kai, spoke up, Sasuke, and he's my partner, Yagyu Koki. 
Partner A, said the guard, eyeing Naruto one more time, sure doesn't like he would make a compatible mate. Oh funny, said, Naruto, with snide, and they say shinobi don't have a sense of humor. It was at this time the guard passed Naruto and checked the caravan. He opened to see three girls inside. They all had black hair, with two having brown eyes and the other blue. They appeared to be normal girls, as they wore sitabaki and some comfortable robe over them. Well, you seem to check out, go on in, said the guard, signaling to the shinobi in the watchtowers to open the gates. The village was quite familiar to the five, as it seemed to have the same structure. At the front of the village stood the market sector, where all the vendors and shops laid about. They could see in the distance the offices for the kazekage, which would make it in the center of village, hence the administrative sector. The rest of the village was comprised of various residences, extra vendors, restaurants, and the like. Any idea what we do now? Asked Naruto to Sasuke, who nodded and pulled out a slip of paper. Says here we need to find this address. Our contact has agreed to meet with us there, answered Sasuke. Any idea who it is? Yes I do, said Sasuke, do you remember Narashikamaru? Naruto scratched at the five o'clock shadow on his chin in thought. Wasn't he in our class back at the academy? That's the one. After he made Chunin, he was soon relegated to diplomatic duty on behalf of Kanoa. He's the one who'll give us the tour and analyze this note for us. And if Sunid Sama couldn't do it, what makes you think Shikamaru can? As I remember, he was pretty lazy, and his grades were almost as bad as mine. Guess he didn't feel like applying himself in school. I found out later that his Jonan sensei gave him an IQ test. He ranked Shikamaru up in the 200s. Naruto went agape at this news. Shikamaru could only be a genius at scowling as far as the blonde was concerned. You're kidding. Nope. And that's probably why Sunid Sama wants him to crack this note. So how come he's not out in the field as a shinobi anymore? Asked Naruto. He didn't care for it much. After more of the rookies made their tune and ranks, he was asked to use his brains for the politics of the village. So far he's done well, and in case of emergency he's always ready to come back and work in the field. After stopping to get a hand with the address from one of the locals, the five found their way to the meeting spot. Looking around them, they saw less apartment buildings and more traditional houses, and eventually they found rather elaborate mansion estates. Fancy part of the village, eh? Commented Naruto. I imagine a diplomat isn't forced to live in a cheap motel. Shikamaru's job definitely has its perks. They found the location at last. It was a building of medium size, painted red, possibly to indicate fire, or Kanoa. After the ladies stepped out of the caravan they approached the front door and knocked. Come in, said a voice on the other side of the door. They opened the door to a wide open room, save for a table with space for six. The man they knew as Shikamaru was on the opposite side of it, already in a Caesar position in wait. Shikamaru looked over the group one time. Who's the new guy Sasuke? He asked. Don't recognize him Shikamaru? Asked Sasuke, pointing at Naruto. The genius looked at Naruto then, giving him a long, steady scan. His left eye widened slightly as he figured it out. Uzumaki Naruto, the knucklehead of Kanoa. So he came back, replied Shikamaru. Nice to see you two again Shikamaru, sighed Naruto. The five sat themselves around the table. What's the situation here Shika-kun? Asked Ino. Being one of his former teammates, she was allowed some liberties he wouldn't allow the others. It's been about two weeks since the coot started Shikamaru, and so far, the most of the rebels are busy keeping the public in line. Daily sweeps of the village happen twice a day, and the ninja have full authority to do what they feel necessary to keep the peace. That's not good news, interjected Tenten. How so? asked Sakura. Giving people absolute freedom in how they do their jobs, that's just bound to be asking for a few sadists to pop up, replied Tenten. Correct, said Shikamaru, any resistance is quickly apprehended and then publicly executed. Because of the rebels' efficiency at this, the number of resisting villages has slowly diminished. As of the other details, not many are known. There is a military hierarchy still in place, but no one knows the leaders and their subordinates. So what can we do? Seems like there aren't a lot of options, commented Ino. At this point there's only one, we wait, answered Shikamaru. We wait, said an obviously unimpressed Naruto. And all the while we let these psychopaths just do as they please. 
Unless you rather disobey Sunid Sama and endanger all of us, then yes Naruto, said Shikamaru. I have my own assets in the village working with what they can, and I know they'll turn up something. Until then, you guys will just have to keep playing the rich and influential tourists. I don't get it Shikamaru, why have this conversation in your own house? Asked Sasuke, a question Shikamaru understood immediately. That red paint isn't just for show, it's made to interfere with chakra signals. As a result, not even a cage's scrying orb can peep in on my activities here. It was designed for diplomats and other dignitaries visiting in mind. Was safe Sasuke. Sasuke nodded to this, satisfied with his answer. Well then, there's not much else to report for now, so let me show you your house, said Shikamaru, sitting himself up and stretching out his numb legs a bit. Since he was used to sitting Caesar, his legs didn't fall asleep, but they still had a lot of blood cut off. The rest of the gang did the same. We get a house, said Naruto. Yes, you're not living in an alley as long as you're here on a mission. I've arranged for some living for you guys while you're here. After exiting Shikamaru's house, the gang took a relatively short walk to their abode. Shikamaru pulled out some keys, and unlocked the front of the sizable building. From the outside, it was low cost, but since it was in the same district as Shikamaru's house, it was one of the more classy places to live. It was a two-floor complex, averaging at about 20 tatami per room. It seemed the bottom floor was the general living area, open-spaced. They could see the kitchen, living room, and reading room just from the entrance. Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura walked up the stairway leading to the second floor to see it branch into a left and right path, each with three doors. The door at the left end of the hall was open to reveal a master bedroom, with room and a bed big enough for two people. There were also two separate bathrooms, though with only a toilet and bathtub. Ino and Tenten found one more bathroom on the bottom floor that had a sink and toilet. They looked in the kitchen to find the cabinets and the fridge stocked with supplies. In the reading room, there were a comfy-looking chair and sofa, and there was a TV in the corner as well, although a shoddy-looking one. There was door in the kitchen, and Eno slid it open to reveal a small courtyard in the back of the house, with a bench and a small pond. There was a massive oak, and it was a large target carved into the side of it for kunai practice. There was also a practice dummy to their far right. After a few minutes, they all met back at the entrance to see Shikamaru. I made sure they gave it a once-over before you came. There are some practice supplies in the back, but I suggest that only Naruto and Sasuke use them. Can't have you girls risk blowing your cover as rich daughters by throwing kunai at the tree. We'll let you know if something comes up, said Sasuke. And I'll do the same. In the meantime, try to just play, bodyguards and client, okay. Said Shikamaru. With that, he threw the keys to Sasuke and took his leave. Sasuke and the others were now alone, all except for a quiet tension between everyone. This was it, they were in enemy territory, and any mishap could spell disaster. They've been under pressure before, but the seriousness of this mission was unique in its own right. Well Kaikun, said, Eno, breaking the silence, why don't you keep me safe while I see about browsing the shopping district? Sounds okay with me, Kimiko Ujusama, replied, Sasuke, Koki, I'll be back later. Got it, said, Naruto. Kai and Kimiko took their leave. And then there were three. How about we go looking about as well Koki-kun? Asked, Sakura. Ah, uh, started, Naruto. Hey no fair Maki, interrupted, Tenten, I was going to ask the same thing. First come, first served Karuga, said, Sakura, sticking her tongue out at her, sister. Please ladies, you can spend time with him later, wouldn't that be fair? But I asked first, you can spend time with him later. Enough, said, Naruto, getting both girls' attention. After taking a breath, Naruto, looked at both of them. I think I may have a solution Maki Ujusama, Karuga Ujusama. What's that? A technique my old sensei taught me. Said it might go well with my, natural, talents. The girls looked on, as, Naruto, formed a peculiar kata, in the shape of a, cross. Both knew the kata immediately, but now they were asking themselves how the hell did, Naruto, know of it. Cage bush and no jitsu, said Naruto, and formed one shadow with the technique. Ah, uh, Koki-kun, asked, Sakura, how do you know how to do that? That's a kinjutsu, and the only known record is in Kanoa. Yeah, 
Only people with high prestige, or those who perform a feat of heroism ever get to learn of that jitsu, much less perfect it, interjected, Tenten. My old sensei was one of those few people allowed to look at the Hokage's forbidden arts. He said it wouldn't be dangerous for me, seeing as I have lots of stamina. I'll bet, said, Sakura. But I see your, solution, now. One for each of us, okay Karuga. So with the frivolous argument resolved, Naruto, Tenten, and, Sakura, went on their merry ways. Sakura, was looking at the shadow of, Naruto, who was escorting her. Or so she thought it was the shadow, that's the problem with the cage bushin technique, as you can never be so sure about who's the original. After a few minutes, Naruto, caught on to her starting. Something wrong Maki Ujusama, asked, Naruto. Being caught staring stirred, Sakura, back into the present. Oh, sorry about that, just had a lot on my mind is all, said, Sakura. You know, it's been a long time since it's been just you and me, hasn't it? Yeah, the last time was, said, Naruto, a solemn look coming over him. Maki Ujusama, are you mad at me? Now that question was out of the blue, as, Sakura, looked at, Naruto, in bewilderment. Why would you think I'm mad at you, Koki-kun? She asked. I know it wasn't my choice, but nevertheless I left you almost all alone in Kanoa. I remember you having as many friends as I did, and that was only two. It must have been lonely for you, and it hurt to know it was me who caused it. So that's what was troubling him. He must feel he has to clear the air, thought, Sakura. It was certainly a paranoid thought, but then again, she knew that if there was one thing, Naruto, treasured, it was the few people he could call friends. She put a hand on his shoulder. I found a way to make it on my own Koki-kun, said, Sakura, and now I have a lot of friends, and you should know that you do too. As far as I'm concerned, you have nothing to be sorry for, okay. Naruto, looked at his friend with a satisfied smile. With this little talk with, Sakura, he was sure now that neither her nor Sasuke harbored any negative feelings for their friend. He mentally slapped himself a bit for being so paranoid, but his friends would understand. It was at this point that he noticed a small boy, bump, into, Sakura, rattling her slightly. The boy just kept running, however, Naruto's, Tezumateki stopped him dead in his tracks, as the blunt head of the axe crashed a millimeter from the boy's right side. The little boy was frozen solid in fear. Naruto, walked up the stunned kid, and knelt to get to his eye level. It's not nice to steal people's things, okay? Said, Naruto, gently as possible. The boy was traumatized as is already at this point. The boy shakily reached into his pockets, and handed, Naruto, what he had taken, a small wallet with a cherry blossom on it. Thank you, said, Naruto. He sheathed Tezumateki and let the boy run, to which he did. Did you really have to be that brutal about it Koki-kun? Asked, Sakura. Ah, I wasn't going to hurt him Maki Ujusama. Besides, that little boy has definitely learned his lesson. With that, Naruto, and, Sakura, continued their little tour. The boy ran until the man he now classified as, Crazy Axe Man, was out of sight. He was stopped by a pair of shoulders, and looked up to see two young men looking at him. One had very scary eyes, and the other was wearing battle paint for some reason. Kid, did that man hurt you? Asked the scary-eyed guy. The boy nodded, just too scared to clarify what he meant. Looks like more administrative thugs at work. Now they've resorted to picking on kids, spoke the battle paint guy. We'll keep an eye out on him, and if he trees anything, my sand will crush him, spoke the scary-eyed guy. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.